Wednesday video. Oh. So before we go any further, hello, I'm Rachel. I'm Nikki, and, and we're the Stitch Sisters. We are the Stitch Sisters. And we have missed you guys so much. Yeah. We've had a month long break uh, with a holiday abroad and then a, a, a social media detox. A, a sabbatical from social media. That's right. So yes. I thought that we should come back to you with a new video where you yeah. can actually make something along with us. <laughs> And in this video, we've made amazing patchwork gypsy skirts, which is what you were looking at. <laughs> so they are absolutely huge. Yes. And uh, we've got some awesome pictures to share yeah. with you. But not only that, we've got a tutorial for you to follow along on the blog, where Rachel explains how you draft your own pattern piece, yeah. how to piece it together, and how to make your own skirt. Yes. So it's really, really simple, but it was actually inspired by this picture that came up in my feed on Instagram mm -hmm. months ago. And it was just a, a site that I follow, kind of boho fashion and style. Yeah. And I instantly fell in love. Stopped you in your tracks. It did. And the thing is, is that patchwork and any kind of handicraft has been in fashion for a while now. I mean, I'm talking sort of more high fashion editorial stuff, but yes. that does mean that you get to have a little bit of fun and make something yeah. that's definitely definitely so frosting and it's definitely <laughs> a bit extra. So I'd had this picture saved for a while and then I thought, oh, do you know whose fabrics would be perfect? Mm. Art gallery fabrics. Art gallery fabrics are perfect for everything. They Let's are just really say lovely. that now. Let's be honest. <laughs> So basically they release collections of fabrics and they all match. So that means that you get to have this brilliant range mm -hmm. of colour and pattern, mm -hmm. um, but you you know it's all going to coordinate. You don't yeah. even have to think about having to match them all. So. Exactly. But normally you would use these kind of cottons to make a quilt. That's mm -hmm. what most people do. But oh no. Oh, oh no. no. Not for us. No, I mean, no. We do love a bit of quilting. We do. I'd rather a quilt I could wear. <laughs> And that's what we've done. That's what we've created, <laughs> yes. So I approached our gallery fabrics and asked them if they'd be interested in a collaboration and they very kindly sent me um, 12 yards of fabric from their legendary Boho Soul collection. It's by yeah. Pat Bravo. And it's gorgeous. It is gorgeous. So it's got lovely teals. It's got like Mustards. this almost mustard orangey yellow, cerise pink, mm. greys, deep greys. Yeah, just beautiful mm. turquoise teal. Um, mm. Lovely collection of colours. Um, and uh, and I thought, because I'd done some calculations, having studied the picture, yeah. and I knew that I needed 48 segments on my skirt. Yes. So I thought 12 yards, four segments Can from each. Can we just say that again? 48 segments. Yeah. Let's just say that so that you get that. 48 <laughs> segments. 24 on the front and 24 <laughs> on the back. This is how big it is. Anyway, continue. But I realised after I actually made my pattern piece and started cutting my pieces that I was going to have enough for two skirts. <gasps> possibly want a totally over the top extra patchwork gypsy skirt <gasps> and then me and we can match and yes. have have 20 skirts we can although mine is slightly different to yours isn't it yes i i decided instead of doing 48 segments i would do 24 segments yes but i doubled the size of them yeah so you, you'll have both options mm -hmm. and whichever one you want to make depending yeah. upon how much sewing you want to do um it's yeah i mean in theory there's no reason why you couldn't do even less than that you could do yeah. 12 segments the mm -hmm. only thing that you have to think about is that the pattern piece has a straight edge and obviously the more of them that there are being joined on the bias you're getting a slight curve as they go around right, and that's yeah. going to hug your body better uh -huh. if you just had i don't know six segments then that straight edge at the top would be much bigger and it would just mean that it's a little bit harder to bring it into mm. a flattering shape on your waist mm. but then the waist is elasticated so yes. that's going to bring it in anyway so you could do as few or as many as you wanted yes i would love it if someone was brave enough to do more than 48 because yes. <laughs> you'd be talking about the skinniest <laughs> Um, it would be good though, I think, because it really shows off the fabric. Yeah. I mean, it is a lot of fabric, don't get me wrong. It is a lot of fabric, but I think we've shown the, the full collection of this art gallery fabric to its best by yes. having them all together. Yeah. But you could simplify it just by having two fabrics. Uh -huh. You could have two different size spots, you could have stripes Absolutely. and play with the stripes. Yes. You could, there's all sorts of combinations you could do. Yeah, and it'd be a great scrap buster as well. So mm -hmm. if you've got a long, skinny strip that's maybe, 
I don't know, six, seven, eight inches wide, yep. sort of 20 centimetres, and you're just wondering what you're going to do with it, then it could be one of the panels on your skirt. Yeah. Um, and that's what we want to do more than anything, is to encourage people to not necessarily look at patchwork purely for quilting and homewares, but to think mm. about how you can apply it to fashion as well. Mm. And fun. And have <laughs> some fun with it, yes. So, over on the blog, there is a detailed tutorial that's telling you exactly how to draft your pattern piece. Yes. But we'll talk you through the process very briefly here. By looking at the picture, I knew that I wanted the finished pieces to be roughly an inch mm -hmm. um, at the top, and I wanted it to expand to about six inches at the bottom. And I knew that I was going to be joining all these pieces with a quarter inch seam allowance. Mm -hmm. So what I did is I started off with a long strip of paper and I drafted a pattern piece that at the top was an inch and a half. So by the time I'd taken a quarter of an inch off each side, um, it was an inch. And then at the bottom was six and a half. So again, by the time I'd taken a quarter of an inch off, that was going to be six. Yes. And so you can draft it as a basic pattern piece and then add your seam allowance, or you can just factor that in because the design of it is so simple that mm -hmm. you don't have to add seam allowance separately. You can just add that into your calculation. Yeah. So I made sure that I started out with a straight line down the middle of the paper, and then I did half of my one and a half inch on either side of the line and the same on the bottom. Mm. So you've got a mirror image. That's right. Now on the top, it's such a short amount that you're not going to have to worry about blending that into a curve mm -hmm. but on the bottom you do want to create a slight curve and I'll show you on the blog how to do that but it's just using this the uh, diagonal line that you've then drawn when you're joining up the line at the top and the line at the bottom then using that edge to create a right angle which is just going to slightly curve out the bottom edge yes. of that piece and that's going to mean that you get a much smoother edge rather than having lots of steps or lots of straight edges mm -hmm. you've got a nice uh, curved edge all the way around the bottom. So obviously you need to then cut all of your pieces out. Mm -hmm. So whether, as Nikki said, you've just got two fabrics and you're cutting half of your pieces out of one fabric and mm -hmm. half out of the other. Yeah. And I love your idea of having um, maybe a similar pattern but two different sizes. Yeah, because that's been like that. very in vogue for the last couple of, well, last season anyway. Yeah. So two different size spots or two different colour spots, the same size. Yeah, you, you could, could also use it. plain fabrics. Yeah. Just do, literally do a rainbow skirt. Yeah, I mean, imagine could. that if you started at yeah. red and went all the way through to India. I know, one of the rainbow skirts. And then just kept going, then that would just be so Why much did you fun. put that to my head? <laughs> Art gallery fabrics also have solid They do ranges. have just an amazing so you know. range of solid <laughs> colours, yes. Um, so once you've got all your pieces cut, you then need to sew them together. Now mm -hmm. we applied kind of quilting principles for doing that because mm -hmm. it's so much easier if you actually sew them in pairs. Yeah. Um, and then you can do something called chaining, which is basically where instead of cutting your threads when you get to the end, you just put the next one through. Mm -hmm. Now we also sewed all of ours up on the overlocker. On the overlocker yeah. And we did that because it meant there was no need to finish any seams off. Mm -hmm. At the end, we could just press them to one side. It's just as nice. Done. Done. as it was and um, when you've got inside. quite so many seams on the inside yeah this is at the bottom of the skirt here then it's nice to mm. have uh, them all nicely yes. finished when I because well, I pressed both of these because they were at my house when we when we sewed them yeah and when I pressed them I turned them inside out and I just press all the seams going in the same direction mm -hmm. so when I put it on the iron board and you need a big iron board for this because it took up the entire length of the iron board yeah whichever direction the seams seem to be going in I just uh -huh. press them all like a big circle going all the way around and that just means that it's going to sit much yeah. nicer and much flatter yeah. rather than having them going in different directions and it is pretty much a circle it's mm. pretty much a full circle skirt by the time you've sewn them all together mm -hmm. if you were to lay it flat open it would be a giant circle Mark you could use it as a picnic blanket or a tent <laughs> You can sit in the middle and lay it out and all your friends can nice. sit around you on your Aww, skirt and have a picnic. It wouldn't just be nice. Um, so once you've got them all sewn together, so like I said, you can start off in pairs and then you can start sewing those pairs together so you then have blocks of four mm -hmm. um, and then until you've got two halves of a skirt and then you've got your final two seams to sew yeah. together and you've got the whole thing complete. It's much easier that way as well because you get to be in, in more control about which fabric is going next to whichever one. Yeah. So if you've got a specific pattern that you're following, mm -hmm. 
if you've got multiple fabrics and you've laid them out yeah then it's much easier to do that than to try and do it as one great big thing it is but just bear in mind that if you are trying to follow a certain order we were um it is especially on the 48 panel skirt it mm. is going to be a little bit of a head scratcher and you could make your life a lot easier if you just give up to the randomness of yeah. it and just, just grab whichever one yeah. takes your fancy it and really then doesn't matter. my only rule for doing it random is i just don't want two fabrics together but i'm kind no. of as long as they're not the same fabric together i'm quite happy for them to be next door but one usually or... i usually go by same fabric same print yeah. or same color yeah so as long as you avoid that yeah then you're exactly. absolutely fine yeah so you could take the stress out of it now i forgot to mention when i was talking about making your pattern piece obviously you have to decide how long you want your skirt yeah. to be and we wanted ours to be as long as possible it depends how long you are yes exactly <laughs> now we had a yard each uh -huh. of each fabric so we just went with the um width of the fabric because the width was slightly wider than the length so yes. the width is 42 inches mm -hmm. and so we just went with the full full length of yeah. the fabric mm -hmm. um but you could do a smaller skirt you could do a midi length skirt you could yeah. do a mini skirt it's <gasps> entirely up to you what kind of shape you're yeah. looking for um just bear in mind how full it is so um personally we wanted the length for the drama yeah. um, because we got to have so much fun with the pictures. I can't <laughs> wait for you to see them. But just to be able to expand the skirt out yes. and just, you know, just twirling for days. It's just a, such a fun skirt. And there was knicker flashing in the woods, that's all I'm saying. There was, yes. If anyone had been hiding behind <laughs> us in the trees, they would have had a, quite a show. <laughs> They've got an eye full, definitely. Yes. <laughs> um, so once you've got them all sewn together, then the next thing you need to do is make your waistband. Mm -hmm. now, now the waistband depth we just did at four and a half inches because we were using a um, two inch wide elastic mm -hmm. and so we needed double that plus a, a quarter inch seam on both sides of yep. the waistband and then it's entirely up to you um, you could go uh, deeper or narrow depending on the width of elastic that you've got or how deep you want it to be yeah now the length of the waistband will be determined by your finished skirt top mm -hmm. so when you measure it if you fold it flat and then you measure it from side to side then that's going to be half your waistband mm -hmm. and if you're using two pieces which we did because we didn't have a piece left that was long enough to do the entire waistband and so we, we did a front and we did a back yeah that's um, and right. so that's the length plus a little bit of seam allowance for you to be able to join the two pieces together to make one long waistband it's dead easy it is dead easy and what you're then going to do is you're going to fold that in half wrong sides together uh-huh and you can actually close it almost all the way around um, you just want to leave yourself a little opening so that you can then feed your elastic into the channel mm -hmm. and you're going to fold it in half so that the raw edges are meeting mm -hmm. and then you're going to line that up with the raw edge on the top of your skirt just yeah. as like you're putting a cuff or a band a neck band on something and then once that's all sewn all the way around leaving yourself a hole for your elastic you can cut your elastic to the size of your waist so yeah. just wrap it around your waist straight stretch it a little bit make sure it's comfy make sure you've got a little bit of an overlap to be able to join it mm -hmm. and then feed it into your waist channel with um, a safety pin um, mm -hmm. and then once it's through you can just overlap the ends and sew them closed and that's it the final thing to do is hemming now I can't tell you how long the hemming took because Nikki hemmed both of ours I did I pressed them and hemmed them the pressing took longer than the hemming actually really but it is one of those things I did overlock the end so if I can show you that, so instead of turning it twice, because I didn't want to do both of them twice, because it's a lot of fabric. Also, it would be quite bulky on such a big, yeah. on such a long hem, I think. And but also the overlocking helps to allow you to turn it nicely. It yeah. helps you to uh, give you some stabilise it, stabilise it to it? turn it. Um, and it does, it does, it gets. It's one of those sewing jobs that you get a quarter of the way through and go. Am I not finished yet? And you look how long you've still got to go and there's about a mile of fabric still left to be sewn. Yeah. But it wasn't too bad. It's easy sewing. Yeah. Especially once it's overlocked and you can just get into the swing of it. I just use the, the width of my presser foot as a guide. Mm -hmm. And instead of trying to press it all, I just did it underneath the machine yeah. and went from that. And yes. that's how it worked best for me. Yeah, and it's it's turned out great because mm -hmm. there's no ripples in it or anything. So no, even without pressing. Wasn't. Then, no, but sometimes, <laughs> you know what it's like when you 
you turn yeah. it heavy, but you haven't pressed it first, you can sometimes mm. get a little bit of twisting in it. But there isn't any. But it's it's cotton. It, it you know it, it definitely it, it sat nicely, it pressed nicely. It's so lovely, yeah. and it is now draping beautifully as well. I think they really sit nicely. Yeah. And cotton sometimes can be a bit stiff, but I think because you've got the panels, it gives it more movement, doesn't mm -hmm. it? Because it's not sitting quite so prominently. If that makes any sense, yeah. it's softer. Yeah, it does. Yes, and actually this has a lovely. Uh, even though it is a, a, a cotton, a quilting cotton, a cotton poplin, it's got a lovely kind of sheen to it, hasn't it? Yeah. It's got a lovely feel to it. It's very soft cotton, which is what you'd expect from Art Gallery, which is very, very good quality yeah. fabrics. Um, so we would love for you guys to go and check out the blog post yeah. and maybe try one for yourselves. We'd love to get your take on it, whether you've got fewer or more panels, what yeah. different lengths you've tried. Someone made a completely scrappy one from all the leftovers. That yeah. would be amazing. We would love to see that. And if you do mm. happen to make one, then just use hashtag SS for stitches, just SS Gypsy Skirt, yeah. and that way we get to see it. But also if you tag us as well, yeah. um, or comment below and let us know. Yeah. Um, so we hope this is a nice fun project for you. Um, it, it was originally intended to be made in the summer um, and actually we ran out of time so um, it's ended up being an autumn make but mm -hmm. actually I think that worked out perfectly yeah. because the colours, um, whilst they are quite vibrant and could be summery, mm -hmm. the browns and the teals in them make them and kind the of all autumnal as well. Yeah. And actually all of this fabric might have been a bit too hot for in the, the summer, summer anyway. Yeah. So I'm really looking forward to putting mm. it on with some boots like you did today <laughs> and just sort of having it as an everyday yeah. swooshy skirt just you could also people will see you coming you could wear it with a little jumper mm. just having a jacket off the top and I think it would be perfect now the most important question is did your skirt today fulfill the dream of the picture well you'll have to be the judge so we're going to put <laughs> both up now side by side and you can tell me how well I did I mean clearly she has a much smaller waist than me or she and doesn't. she's probably much better at posing than I am <laughs> uh, but I think it turned out all right and yeah. actually I, it, is, it is something that I you know when sometimes you see things in it and it makes you have a sharp intake of breath you love it that much yeah like, oh! and that's exactly how I feel when Nikki came over having hemmed the skirt and it was all pressed and ready to put on and I and I put it on and you know when you've got that kind of like nervous feeling because you don't you don't yeah. know if it's gonna live it's, up to what you had in your a head a big thing to live up to yeah, yeah. And even though it didn't take long to make at all really no um it, it kind of I don't know I just this fabric was so lovely and I wanted to do it justice mm -hmm. And the second I put it on and looked in the mirror, I definitely felt <laughs> I just just it felt so glamorous and yeah. wonderful and squishy and, and yeah, so it definitely lives up to expectations. Fabulous. That's all we want. So I want to say a huge thank you to Art Gallery Fabrics for collaborating with us on this project. Um, it's been so much fun yeah. and we hope that the pictures that we're going to leave you with now show quite how much fun we were having <laughs> and our skirts. And, uh, and like we said, if you decide to make one, please do let us know because we would love to see. Mm -hmm. And head over to the blog. So it's www.thestitchsisters.co.uk for all the instructions. Now, if you're new to sewing um, or if you already sew a bit but you'd like to improve your sewing skills, then don't forget that we have a range of online classes which mm -hmm. you can find at the same address as the blog, www.thestitchsisters.co.uk. UK and there we have classes everything from little quick projects through to more detailed projects on how to do adjustments and how to use overlockers and how to use commercial patterns and lots and lots of lovely classes oh, so make sure you go and stuff. check those out <laughs> and we'll be back soon with a new video see you soon bye, bye.